The royal households had corgis since the Queen's childhood, and they were a constant presence as her own children were growing up. She's had more than 30 since coming to the throne, but the popularity of Pembroke Welsh corgis has plummeted across the country. Corgi owners like Ian, now a dying breed. You can take them anywhere, we can take them in the car, but they're fun and they've got a good, they've got good spirit. While these dogs are still a royal favourite, even Buckingham Palace is now home to just two. Was it the Queen that inspired you to get corgis in the first place? No, we just fell in love when we saw the litter and that was it. Once seen, you're smitten. In 1960, people were rushing out to get this type of corgi. Nearly 9,000 registered across the country. But last year, fewer than 300 were recorded, making them a vulnerable breed. Is there a risk that corgis could eventually not exist anymore? Well, obviously, we'd like to think that that won't happen. Um, it isn't unheard of for breeds, actually, to go all together. Uh, but one would hope that the, the breed specialists, the people that have had them all their lives and that want to continue with them, will continue to do so. Some say celebrity endorsements make a big difference. Corgis are out, chihuahuas are in. Even Prince William admitted to not being a big fan and he's opted for a spaniel instead, Lupo becoming an addition to his family. Non-corgi fans have been known to call them noisy and nippy. He certainly barks when the doorbell goes, um, but he's not so nippy. I think that's, that's not really their breed anymore. Do you find that you're a rarity out and about, a young person with a corgi? Yeah, we get a lot of attention. People always ask him if we've stolen one of the Queen's dogs. While corgis may be out of fashion, they're still as popular as ever on their home turf, Buckingham Palace. Sally Lockwood, 5 News.